want to thank you again for joining us on No Stop Lights. I uh, want to thank our sponsors. I would um, I would be derelict in my duties as a host and a, um, I guess, a proprietor of No Stop Lights if I didn't thank our sponsors, Francis Marion University, Carolina Bank, Mickey Finns, Victors, Marlboro Pity Electric Co-op, McCall Farms, Pepsi of Florence, PLC, Commercial Real Estate, and McLeod Health. Without them, none of this would be uh, possible. We, we, we've kind of found a lane here. Now, we won't stay in this lane forever, but right now we're in the lane of telling stories about local businesses, local personalities, local issues. Um, we're talking a second ago with my guest about all the growth at the beach. Well, along with all that growth at the beach has been kind of a mass exodus of the majority of our media. I, I get it. I'm not angry with the television stations, not angry with the radio, not angry with um, with anything that goes on um, down there. But but we have been, um, I guess, the loser in this media market by all the growth that has happened around the beach. And I'm trying to really step by step, day by day, build. I don't want to say a media enterprise. That'd be quite the overstatement. But I am trying to um, figure out a way to engage a local audience about issues that I think are interesting. And I think you would find very interesting and curious. My wife says, this is clutter. And I said, no, ma'am, this is um, acknowledging sponsors. So yeah, it may be cluttered in your world. It's thanking the sponsors verbally and um, and visually. I, we, we, we've had a lot of businessmen and women on this podcast. We've had representatives from McLeod. I want to have a little fun. And, um, and when I thought about having a little fun, I thought about uh, music. I don't know why, but music always puts a smile on the majority of our faces. And I wrote a note here. I said, Liverpool's got the Beatles. Freehold has Springsteen. We've got Jim Mack. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and once again, when I put you in, good, uh, good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm good. Let, let's do a formal introduction. Thank you for having This will be the last damn formal thing you and I do <laughs> is formally going to do so ourselves. That's good. That's good. I've known Jeb a while. I mean, I've watched Jeb sing a lot more than he knows I have. Um, but, but Jeb has... Uh, I mean, become kind of our local guy. I mean, he, they, they are the band that has a following, and I know he's proud of that. So, um, so Jeb, we'll kind of casually and informally go down the road of, um, of from there to here. I, I got to ask this. Um, in the Bible, in the, in the book of Genesis, it says, in the beginning. Right. So, so in the beginning, how did, um, how did Jeb Mack get interested in music? Uh, man, that's a good question. So uh, I grew up. Singing in the choir in church. You're from uh, the South, man. That's what we do. I mean, I'm from Mullins, small town <laughs> okay. like you. You know, we're both from okay. small towns. And um, I, it, music wasn't really a thing for me when I was young until, you know, you know, after or during college, I guess. Uh, sports was more of my thing. Uh, I played basketball, um, played baseball, was uh, lucky enough to be on a team that, that won a state championship my senior year at Mullins. And, Whoa. Um, played football, caught a couple, you know, couple touchdown passes, and you know, but I mean, I was very, very fortunate. Played with some some really good athletes, but um, my thing was basketball, and I, I I busted my butt, you know, I had to, you know, because uh, there's a lot of good players that come from that area, and um, I was fortunate enough to get a, a small scholarship to Coker, so. I, I was at Coker um, early 2000s, and I forgot when when I got to Coker, you know, I smelled uh, you know perfume, gasoline, and I really forgot about class, which is not a good thing. <laughs> so, I can very uh, much relate. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't. I stayed there for a year, and then um, I ended up after some uh, you know a couple of semesters at Ori Georgetown, going to Coastal, and uh, I guess not playing basketball, music sort of took the place of of that. And so, I, it, again, uh, being a basketball player, hip-hop and basketball go hand-in-hand. Hand. So when I started off in music, I started off as a rapper. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know that. Yeah, so okay. I started writing hip-hop songs, and I met up with another guy, Justin Smith. from. He was at Coastal at the time. He's from Lexington. But uh, we put a group together. Uh, most of the guys were from Columbia, Lexington area. And it was called Justin Smith and the Folk Hop Band. So, I, you know, I did a solo album with Justin, and then we did a couple of band albums. And we got to open up for some pretty cool people. So Everlast, um, Collective Soul, we opened up for them. Uh, the biggest thing was we got to tour with Snoop Dogg. 
because it was sort of like a Lincoln Park, like your rock, that's, that's rap. Really cool. It was cool, man. We did a. Did we, you hang out with Snoop Dogg? Uh, so I had just started a new job. Okay. You know, you hang out with Snoop too long, and yeah, you you're not gonna make it. Do, you're not gonna make it to work the next day. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I did get to meet him, um, and I hung out with Corrupt, who who his his guy, one of his guys. But um, we did uh, Charlotte, Raleigh, Charleston, and Hilton Head. Uh, opened up for him there. And um, so the band played for a year and a half or two years or something like that. And when, when after they sort of went their own way, I was working sales job down at the beach in Merle's Inlet. Okay. Selling uh, uh, medical equipment, oxygen tanks, CPAPs, things like that. And just like most sales jobs – in that industry, there's a lot of times there's cutbacks, right? So I got laid off, and I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I was going to do something in music. So I sat at home, and I looked for jobs in the morning and in the afternoon. I sat on YouTube, and I taught myself how to play guitar. So that's sort of how my songwriting journey started, uh, from hip-hop writing songs to sitting in front of the guitar playing you know, YouTube, learning, and then... Uh, Learning how to piece a song together. Did you did you think you may have a talent? Uh, uh, no. Oh, but you, I mean, I just like I enjoy doing but it. But I mean, if you taught yourself to play the guitar, I, I got to no. believe there was some natural talent there because most get frustrated and quit, right? Well, if you can count to four, you know, you can play the guitar. If you can count to four in time, you say that. <laughs> you, all you guys say that, but you don't understand how hard it it really is. So, okay. So basketball didn't work out. Right. You beat me by my I, – I spent a summer and a semester at Walford. So right. if you stayed a year, you, I mean, you, you've got the better of me and how long <laughs> we stayed in, in college. But, but okay, some, some things didn't work out. Right. You, you kind of – I don't want to say fell in love with music, but you saw something there yeah. that you may build upon. When did you take it seriously, and what was the, the process of going from toying around with it to, hey, may, maybe there's something here? Uh, probably right around that time when I, when I picked the guitar up and uh, I started, you know, dabbling in it more and more and going into the studio and doing my own songs that weren't hip hop, but had a groove and why did you, why did you not do hip hop? Why did you think of, I just think as you grow up, I mean, as you get older, you your things change in your life. And for me, it always been about when you write a song, it's somebody feeling something. Like making somebody relate to you, they make make them feel it too. Like they feel what you're laying down, you know. They pick up what you're putting down. I guess. I got you. Um, and so that was important for me. Um, and nothing again. I mean, I still like we play some hip hop at the shows. Like it's just, we play a little bit of everything. Um, but uh, that's just how it was for me. It okay, I'm gonna story. make an assumption. Okay, you take pride in your songwriting. I do. Um. My producer and I have this big debate, and I've got questions down here, and I've got comments and, and notes. He considers himself a beat guy. Okay. Uh, my wife says, I mean, I'm, I'm a big Springsteen Dylan fan. Mm -hmm. My wife says, I don't want to solve all the world's problems in three and a half minutes. Yeah. G give me something I can tap my foot to, something I can right. have a little fun with. Right. Um, are you a beat or lyrics guy? I think it depends on the song. Okay. I think every song is, uh, is different in its own way. That's how, that's how I feel. So what what inspires you to write a song? Man, everything, man. Uh, I think some of the best songwriters can take other people's stories and make it sort of their own and then make everybody else relate to it. Um, but family is one thing that I write a lot about. You know, that's big for me. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's it just depends. So it starts how? I mean, when, it, when when I do a radio show in the morning and they say, welcome to wake up, it's time for me to run my mouth and talk right. about pop. How does a song, I mean, is it is it 7 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock at night? Is it with a beer in your hand? Is it, it with a... It, any time. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, uh, so, you know, the iPhone is a beautiful thing now because you can just, if you have a melody or if you have some lyrics, you can just open up your voice recorder. What do you mean a melody? Uh, you know, if you're tapping your foot to something okay. and you're humming something. Okay. Just record it. And it comes from where? It comes from your soul, it's, it's, man. <laughs> but it's a talent. Uh, I mean, you'd have to. Maybe, I mean, I, 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 I'm not saying you don't work hard at it. I mean, obviously, you know, the harder you work, the better you get. I, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Um, but do are, are you the guy that starts with the lyric or the 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 the, the it's music? Both. It's happened both ways. It's happened both ways for me. 
I can do either one. I like. I want. I want to stay here because I want to talk about covers and some songs you do okay. and how you try to personalize some of the covers. Okay. So, so something comes into your head. Mm-hmm. You make notes. Yep. I mean, you absolutely. always have a pad. You always have a. I mean, I know a place to go. Okay, um, there's something here. I don't know what it is, but there's something here. Yep. And um, and a day later, a week later, a month later, or a year. I mean, this depends. It could be sitting there on ice for forever. <laughs> I mean, do you have? Back to it. Do you have a half song now? Uh, I have a bunch of half songs. You do? I have a bunch of one liners, three four liners. It just depends. So, but 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 the the events that you encounter in your life. Mm-hmm. Are you always looking for that, Jeb? See, I think we all want to know about a songwriter. Okay, I believe that a songwriter always sees something there to better understand and write about. Am I close? You are, yeah. I mean, it'd be like a novelist. I don't know about better understanding things, but you try to make, yeah, you try to tell your own story with what you see in front of you, yeah. yeah. And, if, and that make, if that makes sense. Well, I'll be sure it makes sense. Yeah. So who do you collaborate with? Uh, I've already got a band. I've written with some really cool people. I get to go back and forth to Nashville um, a good bit, and uh, I've written with people who've been writing for years and years and years. Um, I got to write with I get to write with Bill DeLuigi, who's a, a really good writer. He's got a bunch of placements on TVs and t- you know TV shows on you know different things like that, commercials. Uh, Bridget Tatum, who uh, I, I wrote with her once or twice, and. She wrote Jason Aldean's song, She's Country, you know, from Cowboy Boots. Okay. You know, uh, uh, Tamara Stewart, she's an Australian songwriter, lives in Nashville. So I get to, uh, you know, go there and, and, and write with a bunch of different people, man. This uh, I, I, cool. I'm going I'm to bu- abuse this personal privilege, but it's my podcast, so I can do what I want to. We talked about Liverpool and Freehold. When I think Liverpool and the Beatles, I think Lennon and McCartney, mm-hmm. two of the greatest songwriters of all time. Mm-hmm. When I think Freehold, I think Springsteen, right. one of the great American songwriters. Um, what about them? What, what, I mean, put your say, put yourself inside of them. I mean, do do they know they're writing something special when they're writing it? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, yesterday, when McCartney and Lennon sat down and wrote yesterday, when did they know, wow, that this could be pretty cool? Springsteen and Thunder Road, Born to Run. I mean, when, when, is, it, is it like when you're going down that road, and this is self-gratification for me, yeah. when you're going down that road, is it pretty obvious to you there's something there? Yeah, yeah. When you start, yeah, it just depends on the melody and the lyrics you have flowing. But I'm sure yesterday and Born to Run, I mean, they were like, damn, it's good. Like we They knew that. I think so. I think so. Um, you like to write more than you do play? <sighs> Man, I don't know. It's probably even there. What about writing is different? I mean, obviously, I see you you playing music and having a big time and a big crowd there. Writing, I got to believe it's yeah. more isolated. It's it you and, and it's kind of grinding out, and it's, it's grinding finding, out a song. It's finding the time to do it too. You know, I got three kids, family, job, day job. You know, Jim, is this a full time job for you? No, I sell uh, pharmaceuticals during the during the week, so I'm your I'm your neighborhood drug dealer. I got you, when, <laughs> when, but I mean, when we're out at the Gamecock football game, mm-hmm. you're somewhere writing a song or trying to write a song or trying to play a gig. Probably playing a gig. Yeah, yeah. You you, you play a, around the PD. You play down down on the coast a, a good bit. Yeah. So, um, who's the favorite artist to cover? Who do you have a lot of fun with? Play a lot of Johnny Cash. We play some Johnny Cash. Play some Zach Brown. We play some Eminem. People love that man. They love lose yourself at the end of the night. Uh, but really, man, playing live music is all about for me taking whoever is there, that audience, to a place where whatever they've gone through that week, they don't have to worry about that for that two and a half, three hours that we're playing. Uh, they don't have to worry about that. That's that's what I get out of it. I don't like. I'm in that place too. I'm up. I'm in my zone. You know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of like a golfer, just I got birdie you. in every hole. You know. So you, you take a lot of pride, or I think you do. I mean, I, I'm, I'm I'm making some assumptions here, but I've seen you play a lot, far more than you think I have. You you, you got a certain rendition of Cash. Mm-hmm. I love it. And then you're playing Eminem, mm-hmm. and I'm going, oh, "What the hell's that?" You know, I mean, <laughs> but but that's by design, right? It I is. mean, the, the, the broad yeah. range of music. It is. What kind of music gets the best response, or does it depend on what audience on what day? I think it. Uh, I think if you play a, a plethora of genres, it 
it's kind of each song. I mean, I think it's all different. It's all different. Like, there's no right or wrong way. Like you said, is it the melody or the lyrics? Like, there's no right or wrong way playing live either. Um, do you I, do you cover a song the same way every time, or, or is there kind of a do you feel something a little bit different playing a different chord in a different cadence? It's normally we've practiced it and played it so much for ten plus years, you know, in the band that it's normally the same way every time. Now sometimes the lyrics might change, you know, we might throw in something different there. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much the. But when you decide to do a Johnny Cash song, mm -hmm. you make an attempt to personalize mm -hmm. that Johnny Cash song. Yep. What, what's, what's going on in your head? I mean, you, we know we all know the way Cash sang it, right? Uh, what, what, how do you decide how you're going to sing that song? It's just how how can we make it the best version of ourselves? So Jeb My Ben is country, oh. country ish, funky ish, beachy ish. Beachy with a with a horn section. So what can we do? Can we add these horns here? Can we do what can we do different to make it ours? Can we play it faster, slower? Like how do we need to? What would a crowd like? Do you think at all what Cash would think about the way you're doing his song? I, I he would probably hate it. But no. do you think of that? <laughs> no, I don't think of that. I don't. Think Is that, that a weird question? No, it's not. It's not. Talk about your band a bit. Okay. I mean, you're um, Jeb Mac. It's just the Jeb Mac band. But but you've got an ensemble. I do, uh, let, yeah. Let's talk about them. So uh, it takes a, a takes a village to make it work. So we have Jeff Springs. Just want to give a shout out to the band. Right? No, Jeff do. Springs plays guitar. Barry Carmichael plays bass and drums, albeit not at the same time. Um, uh, Michael Free plays keyboard. Uh, Caleb Oswald plays bass and guitar. And Nelson James plays drums. And then you have uh, James Canty that plays trumpet. And Emory Henderson that plays trombone. So, and then sometimes Rod Brown, uh, who plays around here, some uh, he plays saxophone as well. So it takes sort of takes a village. Now they don't we don't all play. It's not nine people up there every gig, but uh, but we probably seven seven of them. You know. How did you guys bump into one another? Oh man, that's crazy. Uh, man, it's like. I told somebody this morning. It's like running a business. I mean, it, it is a business, but you want. Uh, when you go to hire an employer or employee, excuse me, um, you want – like I want somebody better than me. Like I, I'm not a lead guitar player. I'm not a trumpet player. Um, I can maybe put a song together on acoustic guitar sometime, um, but I want people that are better than me. And that's that was my goal the whole time. Uh, but uh, – so Nelson and Emery have played uh, with the band since the beginning, since day you know, one. 10, 11 years, 12 years ago. Wow. 20, 2012. So, yeah, 12 years ago. Um, and then uh, we got Jeff in the mix. He started off playing bass. Then the electric guitar player left. He moved to Columbia, and Jeff stepped into guitar. Then we found Barry, pulled him into bass. And it was working. You know, Emery was still there on trombone, and, and we added a trumpet. I mean, just it's just pieces to the puzzle to make it work, man. How much That's, input did they have on the show? Oh, a lot. I let them do their own thing. Just kind of play what you feel. Do they surprise play you? what you feel sometimes. In a good way? So, oh, yeah. Have you ever had to say, hey, let's don't do it that way next time? Uh, yeah, a couple of times. How, how, what is that like? I mean, how do you do that not hurt a feeling oh, no, man. of a fellow uh, musician? Man, these guys are like my brothers, man. It's like Jeb, I want, I, want you, I want to say this before we go any further. Politicians want to be rock stars. <laughs> rock stars want to be politicians. <laughs> and both of us want to be movie stars. Right. There, there's this weird dynamic, right. almost an infatuation. Right. Right. That, that, you know, you're in the public eye. I'm in the public eye to some degree. Um. And, and I, I want to know about your world. You want to know about my world. We want to know about, you know, these the stars you're talking about, right. Snoop Dogg and whatnot. So so when the band freelances and does their own thing, do you instantaneously know, hey, we, that, that, that really worked? Or, all right, let's pump the brakes on that. Uh, a lot of times it's an energy thing, like a feel. Like when people are in front of the stage and you could tell, like, everybody's in their own little, you know, Everybody has a little aura around them, you know. It's just a feel thing, you know. Um, sometimes, yeah, we'll be like, man, that threw, that threw us off a little bit. Let's, let's don't do that again. You know, that threw one or two of us off. 
Uh, but that's it's it's an easy conversation. But but some of it's crowd related, isn't it? I mean, in, in the crowd and control of, of a lot of that. A lot of it. I mean, yeah. I, I've heard some of these guys. We're talking about McCartney and, and Lennon. I mean, maybe not Lennon as much. McCartney and Springsteen. I mean, they said, "You want a good show? Give me give me something to go on." That's right. You know what? Give me give me yeah. some energy. We, we kind of feed off one another. Right. That that's similar to to, to the way you feel about it. It is. It is. Any, Absolutely. Any place. That you can remember that it was hard to get off the ground. I don't want you. I mean, I don't want to say, yeah, this party, this day, this family. I mean, you know, when you start off, I mean, it, it, this isn't an overnight thing. It's been years. Uh, it it started with a good group from Mullins coming to my shows, getting their friends from other towns, and then the band building bigger. It. it but I've played plenty of places where it's just like <laughs> you're playing for crickets, man. I mean, it's, you know, you walk but out it's your of there, job. you've made like $25 in tips. It sucks, you know. Um, that's enough gas to maybe get you home. <laughs> Do you kind of get to pick and choose your spots now? Yeah. I mean, you, you build a reputation. So, you build a brand. So, uh, well, we're lucky enough to, to have our core places that we play at the beach. And, uh, I mean, we've been out to Louisiana. We go up to the mountains in North Carolina. We'll go. We'll go wherever. It's just got to work, you know, financially, and sure, and we got to you know plan ahead or whatever. Uh, we've got to open up for some cool, you know, Nashville acts like David Lee Murphy. We did that in Florence here a couple years ago at the, is it uh, the City uh, Center? No, the field, the base of the uh, okay, um, flamingos. What's the field? Carolina called? Bank, Carolina, Carolina Bank Stadium. Field. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Um, so David Lee Murphy, George Burge, who just had a number one not long ago, he was there. So we opened up for him. Mitchell Tenpenny, we did that down at the beach. He's had a couple of number ones, uh, maybe more than two. Um, Easton Corbin's had a number one. You know, just just really cool, just finding our place. I, I'm going to get you to play guitar in a second, kind of walk us through the, the songwriting process. Yeah. You, I, I mean, do you think about being a musician full-time? Yeah. Does that scare the daylights out of you? He doesn't. Not anymore. It did. Uh, it has it before, yeah. Because uh, there's uncertainty there. There is. There is. Um, it, but it doesn't anymore. I, I think we're at a place where if we wanted to do it full time, we could probably, you know, we could make that work. But uh, but we're not, I, that's not, that hasn't been in the conversation. Jim, what, what, what allows someone to make it big? Uh, I mean, is it timing? Is it luck? Is it they're I, damn good at it? Is I it think, all the uh, above? I think it's. Uh, it, <laughs> It's a little bit of all of the above, and I think it's a little bit about who you know. Um, you know, it's much like what do you mean it's by much that? like politics. Well, I mean, it ain't <laughs> protocol or who to call. <laughs> That's right. Is what you're saying there. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I've heard you, and I've heard bands on the radio. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking to myself, you're as good as they are. Well, I but, appreciate. Well, that. I mean, and I mean that sincerely. And I ain't blowing smoke. I don't have a reason to blow smoke. But but so, so let let's go here. What what allows someone to become Taylor Swift? Man. Uh, well, first of all, she is a very hard worker and a very great songwriter, or a really great songwriter. Um, uh, I don't know about Taylor Swift, but I know about some acts these days, uh, the TikToks and the social medias blowing up. And then, You know what Springsteen says about that, don't you? I, I can't imagine. Every ass crack in America has a TikTok account. That's right. And that's some right. record producer sees and says, you know, and that's kind of, does that's that right. frustrate you? Uh, not anymore. I'm not really chasing that. Um, I think the way that we need to do it, we can continue to grow organically and have our fan base. And those are that's what that's what creates sustainable musical income. You know, the people that buy your tickets and come Loyalty. to your shows, the people that buy your T-shirts every time or a hat every time you release a new, you know, hat or koozie or you know that stuff adds up. And um, having loyal fans, man, is 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 more so what we what we search for. Like, I'm not really chasing a record deal. I mean, if it happens, it it would happen. But I mean, I played showcases for Sony and things like that, and it's just not a. Uh, it's just you know a lot of they want the, they want a sure thing, and they there's no such thing as that in the sure. business. It either I mean it's going to happen or it's not going to happen. They don't nobody knows. You know. How often do you come across someone? That you think should make it big. I mean, oh, do you, do you do, do, have you bumped into a, a house band somewhere, and you say to yourself, "Damn, they're they're I mean, they're they're really, really, really good." Does that happen on on rare occasions or, or very often? Or uh, it's not it's not often. Um, I will say one thing, uh, and she's from Florence, and I don't think she'll mind me saying this. I thought uh, Kaylee Green, 
I don't. Are you familiar with Kayla? I've, I've heard of her. Uh, I, th- I think she should have been signed years ago. You By know, the big labels. She signed a big label deal this year, and I think it's a long time coming. You know, um, but um, happy you, for her. But you know, you, she's been in Nashville for 11, uh, ten or eleven years. But you're content. Yeah. I mean, you're very content with, with where you are yeah, and what man. you get to do. Yeah, I get to release music. I get to do it how I want to, and not have to listen to somebody tell me how to what to release or. When to release it or how to write a song and release it. Well, you know, we, we believe, us that don't know what we're talking about but have a lot of opinions and a loud mouth, we believe that once you sign a deal, you almost become property of. Yeah, very. And, and they kind of give you your marching orders and you do what you're told. Very much so in a lot of cases. That doesn't float your boat. Absolutely not. You want to walk to the beat of your own drum. That's right. And, and, I, and I, I'll applaud you for that. I want you to know this. Um, as thankful as you are of us, we're proud of you. Man, thank you. And, and I mean that sincerely. I'm kind of a homer, man. I mean, I grew up around here, and it. I like to see people from around here do good. And um, and, and like I said, I, I was at Dead Dog Saloon. You're playing, and, and you did some rendition of a cash song, and I'm like, damn. Um, you know, that, that sounds really, really good. And then 20 minutes later, you did Eminem, and I'm going like, well, okay. Um, <laughs> but, 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 I, but, but the variety was what, and, and yeah. it's so well done and well played. All right, grab your guitar, okay. if you don't mind. All right. How many songs have you written, roughly? Uh, I have no idea. I mean, definitely over a hundred. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Probably How many, more than that. What What are your favorite songs? What are the whether they're popular or not? What What are the ones that you like? Well, I'm I'm really proud of the work we did there. Uh, it, I think each song is different. Okay, okay. <laughs> and and a lot of people say, you know, when they ask me, uh, "What's my favorite song?" I always tell them I hadn't written it yet. <laughs> what's your favorite song you hadn't written, hadn't wrote that I haven't written? Yeah, I mean, the, the, your favorite song that you didn't write. What song do you really, oh, really enjoy playing? Oh man, um, mm, there's a lot of them. There's country? too many. There's too many to count. I love, yeah, I love playing country music. Um, I, I will say this: I like you mentioned the Beatles, the Beatles, the Beach Boys, the Zach Brown Band, Alabama, um, Steve Miller Band, just bands like that, just bands, you know, uh, harmonies and the melodies. And I've been on this big Beach Boys kick lately. Why? I, I don't know, man. Ron Wilson turned eighty-two. I, yeah, and I, mm-hmm. I watched. Have you seen Love and Mercy? Yeah. So yeah. I watched it like last week, and I think I just, I <laughs> just stayed on this kick. And um, <clears throat> but but bands like that that can put it all together. Uh, but yeah, like modern day, I'm a real big uh, Zach Brown band fan, especially that's that also their first album came out about the time when I was picking the guitar up, and I was like, oh, I want to do that. You know, that was my. Uh, Sort of, you know, that's what I wanted to do. And then you had to figure out harmonies and things like that. I got you. Know? you. So yeah. when you're writing music, surely you got to know the range of your voice, right? Yes. Um, yes. That's important. It is. I mean, I, I heard something, it might have been a, a Eagles documentary I watched that, um, you know, you got to know your range, man. Yeah. You, yeah. you got to know where you can sing and where you can't sing. That's important. It is. So when you write, you're thinking about your range. Yeah, I can, uh, if I have a melody that's out of my range, we just, you know, Transpose it. What do you mean, transpose it? <laughs> move it from move the key. If it's uh, uh, in D, I can move it. You know. Okay, sing me something in your range, and then play me something a bit out of your range. <laughs> Man, that's hard. I don't sing anything out of my range. But I mean, you just just kind of g- g- give me give me an example of something that you like. Wow, we may need to go not there, but but somewhere else. Okay. All right. So uh, so I'll do a cover. Um, I think the original song is here. What is, what is that? It is, uh, this is a capo. It just, it transposes okay. the guitar. <laughs> uh, do you know the song, uh, 25 years and my life oh, yeah, is yeah, still? Yeah. All right, so okay. I think the original's up here. 25 years and my life is still. Get that. But when you, then you get to the, the hey, 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 you know. Catch another gear. Right, so you got to go up to... Sorry, so when we play that, we're in E. And I said, hey, yeah, 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 hey, yeah, yeah. I said, hey, 
you know, like that. That's in your wheelhouse. What's going? Yeah. That, that's in your wheelhouse. You're killing it. Lower, and, lower. And you know you're killing it. <laughs> well, it's well, lower. I can well, say I mean, I, I get it, but that, that's that's in your... Oh, let's go back to songwriting. Okay. So so you grab a guitar. Mm-hmm. You got this thought in your head. Right. You got some lyrics written down on a sheet of paper. Right. You kind of imagine, okay, it sounds a bit like this. Can kind of walk me through the beginning of that. Uh, the songwriting process, I No, guess? I mean, you, you, you've got the lyrics. Yeah. You, you, you kind of think you, you know what the rhythm's going to be like, or the beat, what I call yeah. the beat's going to be like. Yeah. So, so you grab the guitar or a yeah. piano or whatever you so, guys decide so we're to do. Sitting, so we're writing with a guitar or piano. Okay. Um, and we pull the phone out and hit record, and we do what, what's called a work tape. Okay, imagine so I just pressed play yep. on my cell phone. Yep. And it's just uh, you and the guitar singing, or the songwriter that you wrote this song with singing a work tape, which is what you take to... I take to the producer. So my producer is Kent Wells. I've been lucky enough to meet him through mutual friends. And Kent works with Dolly Parton. So he does, uh, he's done all her, her stuff, you know, in the last however many years. hundred. Uh, <laughs> well, he, he's, our, he's our producer now. She's a treasure. She is. I mean, she's an absolute American That's right. treasure. That's right. No doubt about it. So, right. so, so okay, but we think, would, think of a song. I mean, I'm sorry. Keep going. So, so I would take it to, to, to him or to uh, the band. It just depends, you know, wherever I am. And we'll sit down and work parts out, other parts out. And then we'll chart it out and then go into the studio and lay down the parts and do scratch vocals while the band lays down the parts and then come back and do your... Okay, a song that you've written you're proud of, yeah. sing it and play it, kind of as you were playing for other writers. Okay. Uh, What's the name of the song? It's called... Uh, so this song is called Proof. And can, I'm going to segue into is it, the song. Is it a new song, an older song? It's uh, it's on iTunes and Spotify. Okay. Okay. So it, I think 2020, uh, 20, maybe, 2019, okay. something okay. like that. Uh, it's probably four or five years old, but um, a, a buddy called me one day, and he said, man, I'm having trouble. And I said, well, what's the trouble? He said, a girl thinks I'm running around on her. And I said, so, I mean, are you? He said, no. I said, so what's the trouble? He said, well, she wants proof that I'm not running around on her. So he said, all I'm doing is running to the bar. I said, so you're drinking the proof, and she's looking for the proof. So I sat down. And wrote a song called Proof, quite naturally. <laughs> so, you want me to play this whole thing? Play as much as you want to play, man. But she checks my phone every chance she gets. But she ain't found nothing in my messages. She's checking my pockets and searching my wallet. She's damn near losing her mind. Losing her mind, pacing up and down the floorboard, wearing out the shine, staring out the window and cussing at the time. There's no one to blame, I swear I can claim there ain't another woman to find. To find, but she needs proof, I need it too. It's either gonna burn or it'll go down smooth. But the taste on my tongue don't want no one else. Well, just like love, I can't get enough My secret's staring down at me from the top shelf but While I'm reaching for the bottle, she's searching for the truth We both need proof So, I mean, that's that's great, man. That's how we would go, you know, I would record that into the phone and take that to the producer. And, and the producer says? He says, it, it's a lot of times he's like, I don't, I'll go in with a whole bunch of songs and we'll take the best Five or six. There's, a, there's one or two I really want to do. Who decides they're the best five or six? Uh, we sort oh, of, they're all good to you because you wrote them. And, well, and, and, not and, all of them. <laughs> okay. You know when it's a dud? I, I can kind of tell. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You trust the producer? I do. So collectively, you and the producer collaborate, decide, okay, let, let's, let's follow up on these two or three. Yeah. Yeah. And they become a part of your album, a part of your act, a part of your iTunes collection? Right. Okay. Right. That 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 requires a lot of trust in the producer, doesn't it? It does. It does. It what does. about when when the two of you disagree? Mm. I mean, it, it, we can override each other. You know, he can say, "I really think you need to do this one." I can hear such and such in this one, and uh, if I really wanted to do one, he'll he, he'd be like, "Yeah, okay, let's do it." And you're always writing music. I mean, I I want to write more than I have time to. I'll, 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 I'll give you an example. <laughs> but I, so I host a four-hour radio show. Right. 
five days a week, mm-hmm. 20 hours a week, I'm talking about politics. You don't know how damn excited I am to be off the week of July 4th. <laughs> I mean, I just want to decompress, man. Do you ever right. feel like that about songwriting? You ever need to get away from it? Get away from the music? Get away from it? Because we all go toward music when we want to have fun. Yeah. Right? I yeah. mean, music's our happy spot, man. Right. It's where right. we go to have fun. Right. It's where you make a living or, or some of your living. Yeah. Do you ever want to get away from what we all consider fun all I, the time? I think not as much songwriting as maybe playing out. So I think, uh, like I said earlier, like family's important, man. So I think... Having that uh, time to do something on the weekend with with them, like if I play a show Friday night, I'll get a Saturday off. Like that's pretty nice, you know. Um, but a lot of times, uh, <laughs> there are no weekends off. You know, you're working your day job, and you're rehearsing during the week, and then you're playing on the weekend, um, Friday and Saturday, and uh, it just it gets crazy sometimes. Your kids you have how old? To, Ten, eight, and uh, one. Jerry Jeff Walker had a line in a song, She Knows Her Daddy Sings. <clears throat> and he wrote a song about, you know, daddy's always gone. Yep. But yep. she knew her daddy sings. She, mm-hmm. she, her daddy didn't work at a factory. Yep. You right. know what I mean? Her daddy didn't do the regular stuff. But, yep. but he wrote a song, and I, I was thinking about it as you were talking about, I mean, what, you know, you kind of leave your kids. You go do your thing. Yep. You play your music. Yep. You make your money. Um, I mean, they know their daddy sings. Yep. Right? Yep. yep. Um, do they go with you? Sometimes. What's that like? Is it, is it better for you if they're there or not? Um, or does it matter? It, 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 so I love them being there, but I don't think it matters to, to my 10 and 8-year-old. Like they could, and probably my 1-year-old because she's They're not young. real impressed. They, I mean, <laughs> they see it all the time, you know. So uh, What do you mean they see it all the time? And at home, me just playing, beating on the guitar and trying to come up with something. All the time? A lot. A lot. They get tired of it? Uh, I don't think they get tired of it, but you know they're a good uh, they're a good audience. They can tell when a song may be good. I brought home so one of the first songs that I wrote when I went to Nashville to, to co-write was "Sip of That," and and I think I played it on the. Uh, I've, I've heard that. I think you, you know. That's a good song. Play, play and, a little bit. And when I play when I played the chorus, they were like, "Daddy, I like that song. I like that song." So uh, I'll just do the chorus if it's all right. Um, So can I get a sip of that, sip of that, cause it's kind of hard to resist. You got me thinking that, thinking that it don't get much better than this. We'll drink it in slow, oh, 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 till we go, oh, oh, oh. So can I get a sip of that, sip of that? So, you know, when they heard that, they were like, Dad, I like that. And they were humming it and singing it back. So, yeah, but when, when you're singing and playing that, I mean, that, that's your baby. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that yeah. didn't exist yeah. until you stumbled across it in your mind and in your hands and, and playing the music. Is there somebody out there that you would be unbelievably flattered if they played your song? Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm sure there are a lot of them. But so, I mean, it, yeah, there's a, there are a lot of them. <laughs> if somebody wanted to cut, one of my songs, which take it and record it themselves, um, I would let just about any artist, you know, up and coming. If artists. the phone rings and they say, "Hey, I'm such and such from such and such, calling for artist X," yeah, they want to record one of your songs. What one? I mean, is there one artist out there that you would just like? Wow, I mean that that that's. I waited a lifetime for something like this to happen. I mean, it'd probably be like, uh, well, anybody that's hot. Like anybody's hot on the radio right now, because that just means you're going to get more plays. I got you. Know? you. I got like you. a Morgan Wallen or somebody like that. Like that would be, that would be crazy. But you think a lot of Zach Brown? Uh, yeah. I mean, I can tell that. Yes. I mean, if somebody from Zach Brown's camp called you. Yeah, I almost said Zach Brown, but yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, you're writing how many songs at one time? I mean, do you, do you have a catalog? And I'm, I'm I'm three quarters of the way through with this, and I'm a third of the way, and this is only a concept. I only got a few notes written. I mean, I, that may be a weird question, but I'm so interested in the psyche of a songwriter. No, I, if I'm into the middle of a song, I'm trying to finish it. You know, so so you don't have six or seven or eight out there I hanging. Mean, and you start, and you have lines and like melodies. When do you ball it and throw it in the trash? Uh, I I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I've got a list, man. Of no so you notes. haven't given up on any of them yet. I haven't given up. No, no. I What's mean, the latest on the on the back burner? 
If we if we go to the Dead Dog Saloon, uh, July six, July six. Yep. What what will we hear that is your latest song that you've written? I'm not talking about the covers, but the ones you've written. So we play uh, we play we start the show off normally with seven or eight covers. I mean, not covers. Excuse me, originals. Why so, do you do that? Uh, I just I like playing my originals, man. Um, and that shows your originality as a band, you know. Not every band. There's a bunch of bands out there, but there's a most. Bunch, they're called cover bands for cover a reason. Cover bands. That's right. And uh, like I hate, like I, I don't want to say hate, but I, I really don't like being called a cover band because we have a lot of. Origi- you're not a cover band. A lot of originality. I tell you, you're not. A co- I've heard when, cover bands. When you're playing, like we have enough originals really to play for a couple hours, but when you're playing for three hours plus, sometimes people. You know, especially in a touristy area like the beach, they want to hear stuff they know. The standard. And that's just that's just kind of how it is, you know. So we play what we think they might want to hear or what we want to play. <laughs> but we normally start off with with six, seven, eight originals in the beginning, and then we'll throw a sip of that at the end sometimes because it's a good like crowd response, sing along type song. Uh, but yeah, man, we 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 play a we play a plethora. Of okay, stuff, so, yeah. so so the latest. One you've written that you're comfortable, you know, playing in front of an audience. Mm-hmm. P- play a bit of that now. So something you'll play more likely than not. I mean, I ain't holding you to it. I'm not going to jump on the damn stage at the, you know, at the uh, at the yeah. Dead Dog Saloon. There'll be a big crowd there. You know that. I mean, there'll be a big crowd there. I hope so. Um. So this is uh, this is called Mama Said. So and you probably would relate to this. I don't know. Okay. But uh. I heard saying Mama I, Tried. Mama Tried, right? So, uh, <laughs> and I haven't played this. This is the one I was dabbling in okay. a little earlier before we started. Uh, I haven't played this for anybody yet. I just wrote it. But um, this will probably be the newest one that gets going here. But it's about when I was younger, you know, at Coker or high school, uh, dating women or girls that Mama didn't really want you to be to be dating, you know? I mean, uh, okay, all right. So, no, so we're on the same page here. So, uh, uh, but Mama, you know, in the end, she Mama's right. You know, Mama knows. So uh, I wrote a song about it, and uh, it's called Mama Said. But uh, here we go. Roll out the carpet. Here comes the queen. Whole lot of pretty still, a whole lot of mean, poor baby. She ain't been sweet since a sweet 16. I tried to quit her, I thought I could change. I brought her four roses, now she's burned in my brain. Ain't it crazy how alcohol just fans the flame? I should know better, I know nothing at all My shrink gives me pills, my friends say move on I'd ask my dad, but he's been long gone Don't know if I'm right or wrong She's got me out of my mind, I don't think with my head At least that's what my mama said (laughs) Me too, man. I can relate. I think any dude can relate to some of that. Um, Jeb, uh, amongst the superstars, mm-hmm. who would um, who would Jeb Mack pay five hundred bucks to watch to a concert? No, nobody. <laughs> I just that's not my but thing. But in, 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 in the era of ticket brokers and StubHub and SeatGeek and all that, oh, yeah. I mean the, the the working class has kind of been priced out of going to see some of these real famous big big. But I mean, who, who do you have a lot of respect for? I mean, you talked about Zach Brown, mm-hmm. um, and I'm talking. To, I'm not talking about singer songwriter. I'm talking about shows. Puts yeah. on shows and yeah. and and just gives it all they got. And I'll tell you what, I'd pay five hundred dollars to go see Jeb Backman. Okay, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Man, I feel I like just, I, I, I know totally. damn well I've spent five hundred dollars <laughs> watching the Jeb Mac. I don't know how much that money you got or not. I'm totally joking, man. Um, God, five hundred dollars is a lot of money for me. I don't. That's a lot I of money think, for anybody. Think, That's why I said it. Um, you have to be somebody that came back, Elvis or somebody. George you know? Strait. Uh, I, I've seen George. I didn't spend that much, but uh, um, what do you think of George Strait? <laughs> 
Oh, I love him. I love Generational. Him. King, king of country music, man. For a reason. You, you right. mentioned Alabama. I'm, we're drinking a beer now talking about it. We're not drinking a beer, but I feel like we are. So, so we argue on our political show at times, when we have a little fun, that Alabama kind of bridged the gap between pop, rock, and country. A little bit. Yeah. And then Garth Brooks did it yep, a million times yep. over. Dave Baker actually believes that country music is A.G. and B.G. before Garth. And and after Garth, he had that much an impact of yeah. an impact on uh, on country music. Yeah. Um, you you got to be proud, and and I don't want to put words in your mouth. It's unfair, but you got to be proud when you see somebody in the audience not singing a cash song you're playing, but one of your own songs. Yeah, I love it. What what did that feel like? Do you remember anywhere near the first time you looked down and somebody? I mean, we all know I walked the line. Right. You know what? We we right. all know the, the the standards. Right. But when you look down and there's a handful of people singing a song you wrote. Yeah. That belongs to you. Yeah. How does that feel? It's awesome, man. I can't really describe it. Like, uh, do you remember around the first time that you're like, "Wow, man!" I mean, these these people are singing my songs. Yeah, we had a song called Inner Tube, and I remember, uh, and uh, we we had people out there saying, "Play Inner Tube," and it was a it was a a good group, you know, singing it, which was really really cool, man. Is there is is there any? I mean, this is a weird question to ask. You talked about you're comfortable doing this. And doing other things, but but I mean, how old are you? Forty two. Yeah, you're old in the music world, aren't you? I'm old. Yeah, I'm yeah. My, my my daughter did a little um a little modeling, and and I don't know. Somebody called her about doing some earring modeling, and she said, "I'm too old. I'm 21." Because <laughs> you know they started like 13 yeah. or 14 yeah, now. That's right. Um, you, you're kind of a local celebrity. No, I don't know. Well, yeah, yeah, no, stop with that. Well, I, mean, I don't, I don't do it like me now. Well, here's my thing, man. I can't give enough credit to the band, man, because I don't, I don't do it alone. Like, it's not just a, it's not a one-man deal. So that's why I wanted to call their names out, you know? Well, I mean, and, and I understand it. I mean, and I've seen you got a great band. Um, Thank you, man. Why horns? It's different, man. Not everybody has horns, especially in country music. I'm going to give you a weird word. It adds depth. It does. That there's a certain sophistication, depth and tone, to the music. and yeah. you know, having that brass in there. It, it, it's what I noticed to begin with. Wow. Okay. I mean, there's there's a there's a guitar and another guitar, and there's some horns back there. Wonder right. what's about to happen here. Yeah. And and it was a it was a lot of depth there. Um, are you are you kind of where you planned to be when you, when you started down the road of music? Did did you have a plan? Are you kind of sort of hitting the marks? Uh, so when I started out, man, what did you want? At a younger age, you you want that record deal, right? You don't know any better. Everybody does, right? Right, right. Um, and now, it's not you know like we talked earlier. It's not really something that that I you know am going after or chasing or anything. Um, I think, yeah, having the following that we do is great. But I think continuing to have new people at the shows and them telling their friends about it and them telling their friends about it. Just growing, growing in that sense. Is, how many nights? How many nights a year do you play? Uh, last year we played seventy-two shows. So working, yeah, most of us work full-time jobs, and um, <clears throat> there's only fifty. What only fifty? What two weekends? Yeah, is that yeah. right? Um, but two weekends in a year. So we played seventy-two last year. This year we are not playing that many intentionally. Um, so we're we're about sixty-ish. How far will you go to play a show? I'll, I'll go wherever they want. You know. Okay, well, and that's just, what I'm going to do. I mean, that's you know, financial. It, well, I mean, it's all about I mean, I, in, in politics, I've learned money's the answer. Now, what's the question? Yeah. I mean, as bad as we like to not believe that's true. I mean, money right. does play a big part of this. It right. takes money to keep a band afloat. It takes money to, to keep a podcast afloat. That's why I'm thanking all my, my sponsors here. <laughs> but if somebody out there has a, a wedding party or a birthday party and they want a really, really good um, – I, I would never say house band, but but a band that plays a variety of different sorts of musics mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a variety of ways. How, how do they get in touch with you? I mean, how do they reach out? Uh, just through the website. I mean, it goes. The email comes directly to to Jab Mag Band. So, we'll, uh, you can you can they can reach out to us on the website. There's also like videos and some new music up there and um, some live performances and. You know the good old bio and where we're playing. Yeah, so. I, I read a lot of that last night, knowing mm -hmm. we were going to do this today. Um, last question: So you, you're, you're playing this music, and you and you're you kind of um. I mean, it's part time. That, that's what I keep thinking to myself. This is part time. I mean, this is the Eagles getting on a 
you know, a, a private jet and flying around the world right. and everybody's taking care of it. Who sets the stuff up? I mean, how many, is it the band members that get there an hour early? Is it people that you've bumped into over the years that are loyal to you and the band that help you kind of make all this work? No, we, we, we do it ourselves. We, it's all, it's a sole proprietorship. Put it up and break it down. <laughs> That's right. It's like everybody, every man. That's a job. Get it up and get it down. Yeah, it's, it's a labor of love. So the, that's what we always say. The, uh, the the setup and the loadout are what we charge for. The show's free. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I get it. I, I, I certainly get it. Um, man, I want to thank you. Thank you for having and, me. And I, I, I mean appreciate. that sincerely. This has been a lot of fun for me. And I could ask a million questions, but I would grate on you. Thank you. And man. I would get on your last nerve. I have nah, deep, and I, and I mean this sincerely, um, I have deep respect for people who search. Mm-hmm. And I think songwriters are always searching. Yeah, yeah. And and I know that's kind of a kind of a weird way and I've got a real weird demented side about me, but but I believe the great songwriters are, are the ones that search for things that most of us are too afraid to confront. Mm-hmm. And, and and deal with and talk about and you've kind of embraced the journey of songwriting. That's, that's a good way to get over things though, too, you know. To cope with things, to, to cope, deal with things, yeah, to yeah. to think about things. Right. A little bit therapeutic? It's absolutely therapeutic. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you, my man. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, and I mean me. this sincerely. Um, I've seen you play a lot more than you think I have, and I've never left disappointed, and I've never left not surprised. I appreciate it. And man. and uh, I don't want to say that's a testament or credit. Who am I in the grand scheme of things? But um, I love music, and I love listening to you play music. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Thank you.